this artery right here. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> All right, my friends, time for another Dr. Glock and Fleckin' video. This time, we're doing pre-rounding. Why do you been? have to go into work so early? I have to pre-round on all my patients. What does that mean? Well, we have rounds, which is when the team gets together and we go see patients. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So pre-rounds is when the med student goes to see the patients before rounds. Oh, like the day before? No, like an hour before? Yeah, so pre-rounding is generally done by the medical students on the service. And they're gonna be seeing all the patients that is on the team service before the rest of the team gets there. They're gonna get numbers, labs, etc. And the idea being that, you know, if I'm being honest, the team doesn't really rely on the med students for actually accurate numbers because the med students sometimes get things wrong more often than you would expect. So it's more for like the med students learning. At least that's the uh, that's the idea. And they want to see that you are seeing the patients, following up on them, etc. And, and for most inpatient services and rotations, that's gonna be the case. Well, why don't you just wait and have everyone see the patient during rounds? Well, the med student collects all the data during pre-rounds and then presents it to the team during rounds. And again, usually one of the residents has a cow computer on wheels or similar, where they actually can just get the numbers immediately when they're walking into the patient's room because the med student will sometimes have the wrong numbers from like a day old or, oh, these labs were from last evening, not this morning, etc. Oh, so it makes rounds more efficient by having all the data beforehand. Well, no. Rounds still last several hours. So you have time to look up all the patient data during rounds. So what's the point of pre-rounds? Well, we also find out if anything happened to the patient overnight. Oh, so you also talk to the patient during pre-rounds. Oh, yeah. That's like 6 a.m. Isn't the patient sleeping? Well, yeah, but then you got to see the patient again during rounds. So why don't you just let the patient sleep an extra couple hours? Because we have to pre-round. <laughs> Again, funny because it's true. This one, I don't feel is necessarily the worst thing in the world. If you're efficient as a med student pre-rounding, you don't have to get into the hospital. He said, he said, you know, one hour earlier. You definitely do not need to get there one hour earlier once once you get proficient. I think that if you are pre-rounding on the patients that you are following the closest, right? So let's say a service has two med students. One med student takes this group of patients and the other one takes this other group. and Taking like that ownership and really following patients closely is gonna accelerate the learning back rather than just superficially following the entire service. So it's one of those things where it seems really ridiculous because what he's saying is totally true, right? In these skits. Um, but I think there's kind of a gray area here where it's not, obviously it's definitely not all good, but I don't think it's all bad either. I think the truth in this one is somewhere in the middle. Next up, we have know the anatomy before every case. Okay, where is our med student? Hi, I'm right here. Okay, what artery is this right here? Um... <laughs> you know what's funny? When you are looking at anatomy through a textbook, everything is so perfect, pristine. It's very easy to memorize and understand. The first time you see a cadaver or you see anatomy in the operating room, it's way more difficult. Anatomy in the operating room is also actually substantially more difficult than anatomy in the cadaver lab because the cadavers, you have full exposure. You're not like, you don't have a sterile field that's really small and like, you know, things are kind of covered. You don't know where your landmarks are, etc. And then also you can obviously dissect away with minimal limitation. Whereas in surgery, you're not gonna just like start dissecting things unnecessarily just so you can get a better view as to what something is. So these like tangled wires showing that how confusing it is in the OR is very accurate. Uh, uh which artery are you referring to? Uh, this artery right here. <laughs> uh, it's, it's hard for me to see what you're pointing to. All right, so another thing. When you're not sure about questions in the OR, like ask for clarification, but don't ask more than once for clarification or, or maybe twice. I mean, it kind of depends on the situation. You can, you can try to reason your way through things. You can say, hey, you know, I see this, which I think is that, and therefore, like, if you show your thought process and you show you have some knowledge and you're applying yourself, then it's gonna come across much better than just being like, uh, shit, I don't know. Sure. All right, there, which artery is that? Uh, I, I know, I'm not sure. Uh, the superior mesenteric artery? No. That was a trick question. This is actually the hepatic vein. <laughs> Please read up on the anatomy before every case and... Uh, <laughs> okay, so to mess up the superior mesenteric artery and the hepatic vein is like a pretty bad fuck up. I mean, those two are very different things. Please read up on the anatomy before every case and next time 
Anticipate my deceit. In terms of trick questions, I would say they're very uncommon in the operating room, but they do occasionally happen from time to time, especially from certain attendees that like to f with med students. So, uh, <laughs> I do find this stuff pretty funny, I'm not gonna lie. Now, when I'm thinking back, the only surgeons I remember who did trick questions, they generally were actually pretty cool dudes. And, um, it fit their character where they would, they were kind of more playful, fun, and like kind of enjoyed fing around with med students. Can you blame them? I mean, I can't. And I think also when you get more comfortable in the operating room as you go through medical school and into residency, then um, you're less nervous and less stressed out by surgeons or just the operating room in general. You feel more comfortable and you can swing with the punches, right? You can take the jokes, you can have a good time. That's it for this video, my friends. If you have any other videos you want me to react to, leave a comment down below. And if you haven't already, check out this video or that one. Much love, my friends, and I'll see you in that next one.